name is Scott Johnson, clinician, director of percussion for the Concord Blue Devils. Over the four decades of marching and instructing, I've been asked by many people, how can I get my drum line to sound better? We put together a list, our top 10 list of exercises that hopefully will help your drum line achieve that goal. The first exercise we use is called eight on a hand. Using a full legato stroke warms up all the basic muscles in the arms. We like to change it up a little bit. Our philosophy here is to also warm up the brain, the mind, as well as warm up the muscles. So by doing that, we'll change the exercise from eight to eight to eight, eight, seven, seven, eight, eight, seven, eight. The expectations of the Blue Devil drum line is very high. Every year it's very high. And the performers that come into this organization know that. And they know that they have to perform every day. And if they don't perform every day, they're probably in the wrong place. Clinic one. We've had seven rehearsals before this one. It's going to be interesting. I will put pressure on you guys, you haven't figured that out yet. This will be your first experience. I will point you out, have every camera zoom in on you. You're going to be short, 30 minutes, maybe 45 at the most, and that's about it. Any questions? Remember who you represent? Remember who you are. Remember who you want to be. Alright? Rock the House. This is the 2001 Blue Devils drum line. Give it up. Come on.
that we do. Bass line, for example, does a lot of split stuff with every exercise that we play. Why do we do eight on the hand? Come on. Three stuff. Who said warm their hands up? Drum, quads, bass, sticks. Sticks? Okay. Take some scooters and some big guys. Let's take another pair. <laughs> Hey, my mom! She's here! Eight on a hand, two heights. Controlling accents, two taps. The key is to control the stick after the accent by squeezing to control the tap level. Same with the left hand. Squeeze, control the tap level. Double beat in their exercise program. If you don't, you better put it on there. This is the most important exercise you could probably do. Double beat. Any form of double beat exercise will improve your roll quality. Creating two beats with one stroke. We do it two versions here one triplet bass, one sixteenth note bass. Sixteenth note bass. This is a triplet bass. What this exercise does is create this. A good quality of diddle sound which you use throughout your career. It's not too bad today. A little light, 9.18 in the morning. This is my normal drive to rehearsal every day. I had a chance to march with the Blue Devils in the mid-70s. Started instructing in 78. 
pretty much went straight through. Did a few years with Santa Clara Vanguard, early 90s. Came back to Blue Devils in 94, very class organization. And I uh, plan to stick around as long as I can until they kick me out. Come on, Space Jones, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. We got a quick change, we're gonna try something here. Jump, jump, jump is the hall. We rehearse thousands of hours for an 11 minute show. When you have the talent level that, that we get, when you think about the hours of rehearsal that you put in for just this 11 minute show, the end product is gonna be as close to perfection as, as you can hope for. And that's what the excellence of the Blue Devils, I think, is. They learn how to strive for something, a very high goal. And I think that does carry on throughout the rest of life as well. Accent tap control. Using the same philosophy we did with the eight on a hand, two heights, now we're creating both hands by going hand to hand in a triplet bass pattern. Same philosophy, controlling the accent, playing the taps at a consistent height. really can't go anywhere else to see the style of drumming that the drum corps marching band activity brings. It's a rudimental style of uh, flying around the field and drumming. It's such a rush for me to be able to stand in front of a drum line that is that good and experience that. It doesn't get any better than that. Sixteenth note timing. This is a great exercise to have. Half the drum line plays sixteenth note check pattern, while the other half of the drum line plays the actual exercise. What it does is it shows you how to align up the beats to make sure they are perfectly played inside the check pattern.
three key things can make your drum line better. Write these down, remember these, stick heights, tempo control, interpretation. You can do those three things, you're maxed out. There's nothing else to do, all right? Stick heights, that's your dynamics, that's your music. Tempo control, duh. And the third thing, interpretation, make sure all the diddles line up exactly, make sure you're playing the same 16th note pattern, make sure everybody interprets the music, the exercises, the same way. No triplet diddle. Uh, yeah, that's like been around since I have, which is a long time. All right? And this is one of those exercises that you have to have in your repertoire or some form of this because it covers every diddle possibility in triplets. By moving the diddle between the first, second, and third partial, you will cover every possible diddle variation. play in tempo or we'll die. One, two, three. Good. Understand? Hi. Quads, remember that redefinition? The Spock, the two Spock notes, they need to be at the same height that the snare is doing. You were like a mezzo forte. Get the gadot. A little bit. A little bit funky. Let's go, boys. Remember the change. Start getting this tempo in your head right now. It's 190 with a little spice on it. Yes. Don't rush the eighth note. Here. That time it was good. Zzz, da, da, da. Digga, digga, digga. Not clean, not clean enough. Yes. So did that feel any quicker than last time? Feels like we're pushing. That's the way it's gotta feel, guys, every time. Push, push. Entire ensemble needs to make sure we are jumping to 170. It's a little slow. It starts with that first rhythm. We gotta be aggressive about that rhythm right there. I think we gotta get a louder dut sound. These guys couldn't hear it. Come on, Robert, be careful not to rush. Break. Yeah, that was good. Nice pod. Woo! That's it. Triple it, triple it, eighth note. You ready for us? I've got 10 DCI high percussion titles. I've got 10 DCI full core titles. I've had titles in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and uh, hopefully we'll get some in this new decade coming up here so we could have four decades of winning. 16th note rolls. Same philosophy applies which we just did with triplet diddles, only now we're dealing with a 16th note variation.
the most difficult part of this activity is having the sound arrive to the audience at the same time. If the performers play with just the conductor's hands with what they see, this is the sound we will hear. If the sound is established from the back of the field, the sound should line up by the time it reaches the audience. If the sound is established in the front of the field, the sound will open up even more. What we've established is that if sound starts at the back of the field, it will arrive to the audience at the same time. Next best option, watch the conductor, use the conductor. Hopefully this will help you out in the future. a good run and surrounded myself with uh, phenomenal people, great instructors, great friends, Ron Mochler, Rick Odello, Ray DiDonato, Ron Minky, Steve Corsi, Tom Catherine Float, Scott Kent, Terry Shelberg, Tom Nanny, Gary Gilroy, Kevin Murray, Dave Glide, Jeff Lee, Roger Carter, Sean Vega, Omar Green, Mike Sanchez, Glenn Buker. Flam accents. By isolating what one hand does, you can learn how to control the stick heights. There are four basic directions in movement. Forward, left crab, backwards, and right crab. Here are some key points for each direction. For moving forward, it is important to understand that the heel hits the ground on the beat. While moving backwards, the heel should never hit the ground. The ball of the foot then becomes the beat. While traveling sideways, we call this the crab. The most important thing to remember is not to turn the knee. This occurs when you lead with the heel. We like to keep the feet parallel to avoid knee injuries. Stop!
shopping spree. Here comes the Hero Licks. Every year we let the drum line come up with these exercises. We give them the creative license to express themselves and have a good time. They like to say they're shopping for harder beats. joy about marching percussion is seeing kids being able to progress to get better throughout a season. The joy on their faces to be able to perform in front of a crowd. There's not too many options in life where you can become the best in the world at something. We have that opportunity with what we do here. As the season progresses, you'll find sections in the show which need more work than others. So get creative. Make up exercises that will improve those sections. They put too many hours into this activity not to have fun. So we definitely make sure we have a good time. As hard as you rehearse, as many hours as you put into rehearsing, the blood, the sweat, the tears that you put into every rehearsal, if you're not having a good time doing it, it's not worth it. philosophy that we use, actually a philosophy that my father taught me, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. I have fish in my shoe right now. They're like <laughs> migrating to my shoe right now. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.